This video is based on opinion and speculation, and it is not meant to defame, harass, or harm anybody, any person, any group, or any company. So we have the results of the Costa versus Dissociated case, and it came much sooner than we thought it would. After months and months and months of debating what's going to be happening with this, what the judge is going to think, everything like that, we finally know what the judge has to say, um, although there could be more after this, but the document's out so we can have a look at it together. Listen here though, before that, it is currently 43 degrees and I have not had enough sleep, I have not had enough coffee, and I was also at two memorials this morning, so I am not in the mood for any silliness. <laughs> Most of these are lovely, but the ones who are prone to silliness, you know who you are. Um, but also on top of that, you'll know that I'm not at home, so I don't have my proper equipment. The lighting is potentially a little bit off, although I've got a light here, so it's all right. And the audio is definitely off, so I apologize for that in advance. And just so you know as well, I'm gonna try and get through this as quickly as possible, just giving you the main points. And um, I'm gonna try and keep this as unedited as I can, just for my own sake, because again, I'm not at home. <laughs> so let's just start looking at this document here. So I'm gonna jump straight to the conclusion because this is the main bit that you wanna know. Um, and I'm sure most of you who do wanna know every single itty bitty detail of the ins and the outs of everything in this document, you will probably have already read it or you're gonna read it after this. I will elaborate on some of the stuff, um, but this is just the conclusion first. And then we're gonna go back and we're gonna look at some of the stuff pertaining to this. So. Firstly, it says, Mr. Costa was not a joint author of the disclaimer. There was no contract between Mr. Costa and Ms. Wilkinson. Had the contract existed, it would not have contained the implied terms alleged by Ms. Wilkinson. The defendants committed acts of infringement of Mr. Costa's rights in the copyright in the joint works after the end of the bare license granted by Mr. Costa. The defendant's counterclaim for breach of contract is dismissed. The counterclaim that Mr. Costa caused the defendant's loss by unlawful means succeeds. Assessment of loss to the defendants is adjourned to be heard at the same time as Mr. Costa's inquiry or account of, if there is none, to a decision on the papers. So firstly, we see the infamous disclaimer that was a topic of huge debate. This was the disclaimer in the description of Dissociative's videos saying that they're not mental health professionals, blah, blah, blah. Um, Sergio Costa was claiming that he had, there's a mosquito, that he had authorship over that, I swear to God. That he had authorship over that, that he owned that it was his copyright, and Dissociated showed text messages saying that he had just helped kind of guide it a little bit, but actually they had written it. So we can see that the judges said that Mr. Costa is not the joint author of the disclaimer. And also, however, which is against what Dissociated is saying, there is no contract between Mr. Costa and Ms. Wilkinson. However, it does say that there is joint works, which does not pertain to the description of which Mr. Costa is a joint author and that Dissociated did infringe upon his copyright. Since there is no contract, the counterclaim for breach of contract is dismissed. And then on top of that, however, the judge has ruled that Mr. Costa has caused the defendant's loss by unlawful means. So let's look just a little bit further at what it says about the disclaimer. In my view, there was no collaboration. Ms. Wilkinson was the sole author of the disclaimer. Mr. Costa did no more than make a suggestion to Ms. Wilkinson to improve her work. The suggestion consisting of the addition of words are commonplace in a disclaimer. So there you go. That's pretty much what most people are saying anyway. But like we said, there are other works. Um, I'm just gonna read what it says here. The defendants divided the joint works into scripts using the videos uploaded onto the dissociated channel, referred to as script works, and other literary works used on social media, which were called social media works. There was a lot more obviously in this legal document about the joint works and about defining whether in fact there were joint works, um, but obviously I don't need to read every single bit of that for you to know that they're saying here that there was some. So this is scripts and also stuff that was used on social media. Interestingly though, it says the social media works were tailored to be used in online chats regarding issues dealt with by dissociated. So I don't know if this is referring to messages if Sergio had written messages or if this is just the way they're referring to social media posts in general. I'm not sure. And this bit also does talk a little bit about license and stuff like that. We're gonna get to that. But first, let's just look a little bit at what they said about the contract, about part two of the conclusion. So in my view on 16th of June, 2020, it was not contemplated by Mr. Costa or Ms. Wilkinson that Mr. Costa would provide content for the Dissociated channel. 
his advice, feedback, proposals and research would be given. At this stage, it was expected that Ms. Wilkinson would review Mr. Costa's advice and feedback, accepting it or rejecting it as she saw fit. It only later became apparent that it would be useful to incorporate some of his written work into content created by her such that Mr. Costa became a joint author. There was no need for Mr. Costa to grant a license to allow Ms. Wilkinson to follow his advice or to use his research in the form of contemplated on 16th of June 2020. Had there been a contract, it would not have contained the implied terms alleged by defendants. So essentially what they're saying here is that originally it was meant to be that Mr. Costa would be just giving the associate advice and helping with research and stuff like that. So in the initial agreement, there was nothing really said about writing and incorporating that into the videos and the social media posts, as they're saying. But later on, this became something that they would do. And like they say here, Mr. Costa would not need to grant a license for the associate to use his advice. But they do say that for the other works, for the written works, there would need to be a license. So events moved on from 16th of June, 2020. A collaboration evolved, which produced the joint works used by Ms. Wilkinson on her channel and on social media. It is self-evident and was not in dispute that she was licensed to do this by Mr. Costa. The issue is when that license came to an end. So we can see that there was a license being granted, but the dispute is coming as to how long that license was valid. So was it an indefinite use of his works or the joint works, not his works, or did it end at some point? And this is all gonna relate to when Sergio withdrew consent. So Mr. Costa argues that he withdrew his consent to defendant's exploitation of the joint works on 5th of November, 2020, when he revoked Ms. Wilkinson's access to joint works on Google Docs, although he knew she had copies. Or alternatively, because on the next day, 6th of November 2020, in a WhatsApp exchange, he told Ms. Wilkinson that he would contact lawyers specialised in copyright to protect his rights. I think that withdrawing consent to access of some of the joint works on Google Docs was certainly a signal that Mr. Costa no longer wanted to collaborate with Ms. Wilkinson. She had done something similar that previous day. But that is not the same thing as withdrawing consent to use the joint works, which had emerged from the collaboration thus far. The discussion on 6 November 2020 about contacting lawyers was a threat to obtain legal advice, not a notice of termination. So the arguments that Sergio was saying that he had withdrawn his consent on these dates, the judge is saying, nah. But he did end up giving proper termination notice. So on 23rd of November 2020, the solicitors then acting for Mr. Costa sent a letter of claim. And they're saying this is the sufficient notification of termination of the license from Mr. Costa but there was a notice period. Now there is a lot of dispute about the notice period and this is what I was talking about a little bit ago. So the notice period is essentially how long after the termination of consent that DeSosta would have to remove the infringing content because at this point they're saying that it is Sergio Costa's copyright because he is a joint author of the works um, and therefore, once he removes his consent, there should be a time period where Dissociate can then make adjustments. Sergio Costa and his team claimed that this termination period should be 30 days. However, Dissociate and their team are saying that this should have been 12 months. So there's a lot of dispute about that and a lot of the judge assessing how long it should reasonably take Dissociate to remove the infringing material and whether it's actually posing any kind of harm to Sergio to do so. I think a strong factor in the assessment is that there was neither evidence nor even an unsupported assertion made on behalf of Mr. Costa that he suffered any harm at all while the joint works remained on the defendant's channel. No, whoa, voice break. I should drink some water probably. Nor was there evidence or assertion that he would profit from their removal. His reasonable self would have wished that there be no concern caused to the many viewers of the channel. I have no doubt that in the real world, Mr. Costa would have been uncompromising, but in the hypothetical world of Mr. Costa acting reasonably, I think he would have taken a very relaxed attitude to the required acts of deletion and replacement. I just want to point out here that what they're talking about is that Sergio was saying in these documents and in court that his reason for wanting these things removed was because of fraud on the part of Dissociated and causing harm to viewers and things like that. So he's saying he was not comfortable anymore with what the works were being used for. But he later said that he didn't make a fraud claim because this wasn't about fraud, this was just about protecting his works and not having it be used for something he didn't agree with. I also assume that during the relevant period, Ms. Wilkinson would have wished to spend time creating wholly new and additional material as well as otherwise running the channel. 
Taking all this into account, I have reached the conclusion that the parties would have agreed of a period of twice the assumed four month period for the first making of the infringing material, i.e. eight months expiring on the 23rd of July. But it looks like Dissociated still had the infringing material up after this date of the 23rd of July, up until the 8th of February, 2022. So after the point of the 23rd of July, it would now be from my understanding considered infringing material. It is copyright infringement after this point on. And I'm just going to run through the last bit pretty quickly for you because there's just a lot and a lot, a lot of screenshots of um, the point about, let me just read the conclusion part again so you know what I'm talking about. The counterclaim that Mr. Costa caused the defendant's loss by unlawful means succeeds. So that part, because there's just a lot of screenshots about that and I can't find one kind of more succinct one to kind of put everything together. Actually, I did just find a screenshot that will kind of sum it up a little bit better. I have found that Mr. Costa was not a joint author of the disclaimer. The representations that he was were false. These are the representations that he sent to YouTube saying that he was the joint author of the works used on the Dissociated channel. After 13th of March, 2021, the representation that the defendants were using the disclaimer was false. The representation that it was being used without his permission was also false from that date. It makes no difference that on my findings, above such use was licensed until the 23rd of July, 2021. That is pretty much the simplest version of that because like I said, that bit goes on for a while and there's just a lot of complicated bits going into it. So essentially, yes, that succeeded. I do want to point out as well that a lot of the debates that were going on were to do with the disclaimer. And this is because Dissociated had been told by, or not told by, but it was suggested by Sergio Costa that Dissociated would put this disclaimer that they had not written together, that Dissociated had written and he had given his advice on, that she would put that retroactively in all of the videos that they had ever made on their channel. And they did that. And afterwards, Sergio Costa claimed all of those videos, every single one, even ones before he had been working with them on the works or whatever you want to call them. So these videos were taken down because presumably because of the disclaimer. Anyway, uh, both Dissociated and Sergio are talking about both of this. So Sergio Costa posted publicly on his public Twitter on 24th of July, 22. I won my copyright infringement case against Dissociated, but I'm still appealing. Jesus. Christ, I'm so sick of this man. But Vangelina, your bias is showing, like, yeah. So, does my bias change the information that's written in this legal document? No, <laughs> and I'm just reading that to you. So whatever, go away. I'll post the judgment and full story on Reddit in the next few days. So Sergio is gonna be posting um, everything about what's going on and why he's appealing. Cause I'd really love to know why he's appealing and why he can't just Shush. And Dissociated also posted this. So in their thing, it's looking like they're saying that it went well for them and they are gonna be posting a video which is actually gonna be up on their channel before my video goes up. So I'll leave a link for that in the description. You can see what they said. The opponent had claimed infringement of a disclaimer, but the judge found that we were the sole owner and author of that and that he had no rights to it at all. No infringement was found on any of the videos themselves either. Specifically, there were only findings of infringement relating to the pre-prepared comments that we drafted together, and those were known as the Sensitive Topics Joint Works. The scripts to the three videos that were made while we were working together were found not to be infringed, because after he asked us to stop using them by starting legal proceedings, we were allowed a reasonable amount of time to continue using them before taking them down, and they were removed within that time. We also won on our counterclaim. The judge agreed that Mr. Costa had unlawfully interfered in our business by making deceitful claims to YouTube to get our videos removed. So instead of speculating and all that, I'm just gonna leave it here. There were more things I wanted to say, but I think they do veer on the edge of speculation. Um, and I did have like screenshots that I wanted to read. <laughs> But then I realized it's probably me picking apart and being biased, so I'm not gonna do that. But there was a screenshot of like saying that, that Sergio's motives were either altruistic or predatory. So I just thought that was interesting, <laughs> but um, probably not relevant to the conclusion points. I do wanna remind you all though, that this is just the IP case and there is still more to come from this case. Like it's not over because like they said, at the end of it, there's gonna be some extra stuff. And then also Sergio is saying that he's gonna appeal. So there will be more stuff. Um, there 
there will also still be the harassment case, which is happening in November, which we talked about here before. And as far as I'm aware anyway, Dissociated are still trying to raise funds for that through Crowd Justice to be able to afford their legal representation. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna still leave a link in the description for the fundraiser if you feel like donating, maybe you don't, but the harassment case is in November, probably, unless that changes. For now, just a reminder that I am not a lawyer, I have no legal background, and as well as that, this video is based on opinion and speculation, and it is not meant to defame, harass, or harm anybody, any person, any group, or any company. Do not send hate to anybody, ever. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I'm sorry I'm stuttering so much, but I really do need to drink some water, and sorry about the echo. There's very much I can do about it in post that's not gonna make me sound like I'm drowning. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, turn on notifications, follow me on social media, I'm Vangelina Scott everywhere. I also have my vlogging channel that's linked in the description. And there's Patreon and there's memberships and there's just lots of things for me to list. So anyway, have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Behave. Behave. Come back so we can replay our game. Our game.